Hey folks, I'm back. Well, that was weird. I don't know what it was. I guess Spectrum just decided, middle of the day, let's restart everything. Anyway, I'm back. Go figure. Uh, we're gonna reload this. So, we're probably gonna get an ad in the next, like, two and a half minutes. So I'm back. It wasn't me. There's nothing wrong. Just for some reason, my internet just decided to boop, back under, back up again. So we're back. Got this weird noodly thing. I'm going to keep adding some shading to it. And by the time that I'm done, we'll be good. But that'll be really shortly. Uh, I'm really thinking this thing is basically as good as it's going to get. I just sort of gently add some texture to this creature's weird limbs. So hopefully you, you folks didn't get too freaked out by that. Thank you guys so much for your patience. I appreciate every minute you guys tolerate me, especially when, you know, the internet decides to make itself a problem. Even though I pay for really powerful internet, it still happens to the best of us. I would have had some choice words if, you know, I didn't get my internet back very swiftly because I'm playing Witch Queen later. That's That better stay on. I need that. I need it. There we go. All right. There we go. Perfect. Get all our bones. All of our bones. We just sort of get the last little details here. Same thing here. Get like a couple little jagged bits sticking out of the ground. And then we have our little weird like arm bone or humerus. Tibia fibula, tibia fibula, that's what it is, tibia fibula. There we go. Hey, thank you. I told you I'll be back. I had to wait a second. That's how it goes, folks. Sometimes the internet just wants to be weirdy, and I don't know why. I have no idea. I did nothing to it. <laughs> okay. I just want to make sure we got this good. Our shading is pretty strong on this creature already. Let's make it look a little bit more muscular. Let's decrease this opacity about 45. And we're just gonna get some like creases around the eyes. There we go. Now that thing looks pretty freaking terrifying, I'd say. Yeah, okay. I don't think we need to do more with this thing. What was, for, what was for breakfast? Uh, orange juice. Good morning, band. Nice to have you on board. It's the one and only. Today's breakfast was orange juice. 
That's it. I need to work on that breakfast thing. So bad. I should have made myself waffles. I just didn't leave myself enough time. I swear, every night that I get home from work in the evening, and I'm just like, uh, I was just dead. I was just dead. You know, I can't even blame it on work last night. I didn't work last night. I worked in the day. In the evening, I stayed up late with my SO, and we watched the Dynasty, uh, the Dynasty movie that My Name is Bife made for Destiny. Because, again, I cannot emphasize this enough that I am super ready to play Witch Queen because it's literally right there. As soon as the stream is done, I'm recording Witch Queen. Just saying. <laughs> So, quite immediate. Um, so, now we just gotta get a good rune for this thing. Let's change the name of this. Uh, Corpse Eater Rune. Corpse Eater Rune. So, let's go down here and work on this rune. We're gonna have ourselves at 75%, which is about the right one. We're gonna erase this at 100%. So now that we got all that done, let's imagine how we would make this thing look. We need to incorporate its very obvious traits into our rune for whatever this thing is. Just don't tell me it's orange juice. Yeah. <laughs> Too bad it's orange juice. Uh, okay, so we have a big stretchy mouth, four limbs, and then a wormy tail. So I think our solution here would be to focus on the mouth. this thing a giant mouth as a rune we'll have a short neck surprise there's no ads on today's stream there were there was an ad there still is an ad it just didn't uh run i think because my stream decided that it was going to kerputz out because i had I guess I should say I didn't have. Spectrum decided it was going to have issues today. That's why. Super weird. I'm not a fan. Would totally go with a different provider than Spectrum, but they are literally the only game in town. Because America has infrastructure problems. Okay. This thing has this weird bifurcated arm. We're gonna incorporate into the rune. Then for the rest of the body, have it come to about here. Then, we don't wanna make the runes too complex. They need to be like immediately legible as what the creature is. There we go. I think that works. That works pretty good for me. There we go. It's got this weird... gross creature. Sharp... points on the runes, as always, to make it clear where the strokes are so that kids and adults can replicate them rapidly. Then we get that to here. There we go. And we compare that to the other runes we've got. That looks pretty good. I think that's pretty solid. Let's take our eraser now and just clean this up. So you just sort of want to make this look good, like it was drawn with charcoal. You want to make it look slightly angular.
So if I were to tell you this was a creature of some kind, this rune was a creature of some kind, I think immediately you'd be able to intuit, like, its physiology off of it. It looks pretty clear as to what it is. It's a big, gross head. Big, gross neck. Do the same thing here. Okay, do the same thing there with that. We take that, put that in there. There we go. And then we just finally take this part here, angle it off entirely. Now, I don't like the way its neck and its head are off-center, so we're going to fix that. That's bugging me. Immediately, that's like, oh, that's that's annoying the crap out of me. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this little part here, grab our lasso, grab you. Yeah, that's right, you. I'm going to take you and scoot you a little further over. There we go. That should be about right. Yeah, because you want the ends of these to end to line up more or less with the elbows. Take our brush again. There we go. And we're just gonna sort of cut the end of that off. So that it reads as like the back of the tail. There we go. Then straight up and down the center. For the connecting point of the rune. Looks good. Let's thicken that just a little bit. And... Is that centered? It's a lot more centered than it was. Bam. We got ourselves a rune. Say hello to the corpse eater. That, my friends. My connection is some booty cheeks today. What the fuck? Lol, I don't think it's... I think it's down in this area. I'm so, sur I'm so surprised. I'm so sorry. Why is the internet being so weird? Because we have ourselves another glass-wallen foe. The Corpse Eater. Also known as Gross. Just Gross. Gross the Corpse Eater. Uh, now, we can actually do a thing. I've been doing this a lot lately. So, we'll just make this super quick. A lot of folks don't know, I've been working on NPCs. Uh, Non-playable characters slash adversaries. Players to encounter. So, let's open up some of the ones we have already. We have the Branch Devil and the Thud Skull. Bam! And I actually have the art of each one in the background. So this way, when you folks are playing the game, you too can just grab yourself a simple card. I'm just going to scooch this over a little more so you can see it more clearly. Uh, you too can grab yourself an index card and put it on here. And very rapidly, you too will have a quick, easy-to-use monster reference card that you don't need to worry about. It's super easy to work with. Um, so let's go with what this creature is. We're going to take this thing and we're going to make a new one. I'm going to save this. Get right back. Uh, we'll save this as Thud Skull and save this one as the Corpse. Not coarse, corpse eater. That should be right. Okay, and we're gonna open Thud Skull again just quickly so I can have a good reference for it. Because the Thud Skull is gonna be with the same size creature as this. There we go. Okay, so we have our branch devils, which are little cunning little guys, little tiny little tiny little babies, uh, but they're not very strong. And they're big things that they're veiled, they're hard to see, they're hard to hit. This is where we get out our core rulebook here. This is where the core rulebook comes into its own. So, as I've mentioned to you guys once or twice, I'm super sad that this thing fell underneath my chair at one point. So, there are currently, at the moment, five trophies in Glasswall. Or I should say, five trophies in the game setting. 
which if I can find it, there we go. Bam. Five trophies right there, uh, other side, because my fingers are, of course, big and thick and in the way. So we have the top, veiled, which makes things hard to hit. Phased, which means that the, th the creature has a good chance of just disappearing entirely. Armored, which reduces incoming damage. Lethal, which makes combat damage highly dangerous. And Brutal, which makes... Actually, this is one of my favorite ones. Brutal does, like, splash damage to the entirety of your foes if you win the round. So, combining all of these, you too can create basically anything you like. You want to make a grenade launcher? Well, that's taking a missile weapon and giving it the Brutal keyword. And look at that. It's literally an explosive. You want to make a sniper rifle? Missile weapon? Lethal. Nice. You want to make yourself, say, uh, a sword that chains lightning? Hand weapon? Brutal. The system is extremely easy and may be used. Are we playing this week? I forgot my brain is doing no good. I am down with playing this week if you are willing to, Bardo. By the way, everyone wave hi to Bardo, one of my game testers and playing in the off-stream game of Glasswall as I shake down the system prior to its run on stream. Everyone wave hi. So, yes, I imagine we will. Um, so let's take this, the steps we got here. First off, I think it's pretty obvious, this thing, let's go up here, Corpse Eater. And we're also going to go to the Corpse Eater itself, Ooh, I love this art. It's so good. Uh, we're just going to grab this bad boy. Grab that rune. A yoink. And we're going to bring it over to the Corpse Eater here. Should be over by the Thud Beast rune. Bam. And we're going to turn the Thud Beast rune off. Just see how strong it is. It's at 42%. Cool. Corpse Eater rune? 42%. Look at that. Ain't that beautiful. Takes almost nothing. Almost nothing. Get you a good broom. That looks good to me. Uh, maybe a little bigger on the Corpse Eater rune? I don't know. Make it a little bigger. How big was the Thud Beast rune? Oh yeah, it was much bigger. Okay, I'll make the Corpse Eater rune a lot bigger. There we go. That looks good. It looks good to me. Okay. Can't wait to play Jonathan again. I've never fallen in love with a character so heavily before. Yes. Now, also, I wanted to let you guys know, uh, and, and Bardo, I need to let you know, that you, we need to get you, Kung, and Bon all together for that game beforehand because we didn't do the experience. We didn't do growth. I need to do growth with you all. You all get one point of experience, and we need to assign which of you three was the ones who got the uh, Determinator the so i'm going to take a brief moment again to talk about the lore of the game and the mechanics of the game game instead the way that the game works is you don't have traditional experience instead you have growth and growth is done at the end of every session and i'm going to go over here to our main page again to show you so growth right here there are three types of rewards at the end of every session you have your growth which either will get you one or two points of growth these can be used and reinvested directly in your character sheet to do everything from increasing your stats to getting yourself a trophy or using a trophy that you've acquired during the session, or even, say, for example, like just repairing points altogether. Uh, really useful stuff, generally. Growth is a really useful tool. Likewise, at the very bottom, you'll see you have the Determinator, the Relentless, and, of course, the Captivator. And these three are rewards that are given out by players to the members of the party for being awesome. Determinator's kind of like MVP. They made the single most important role of the game. The Relentless is the person who carried the party by doing the most rolls, or rather the one who, whether through clever use or solid dice rolls, generally just, if it weren't for them, you wouldn't have gotten to that point where the MVP would have been useful. They're the ones who got you through this part, through the session. This is the one that kept you from dying in the session or got that singular most awesome moment. And the Captivator is the most entertaining and fluffy one. The one who embodied their character most, had a good moment that made you laugh or cry or what have you. We need to do that. We need to do growth. So we're going to do growth before the next session. And at the end of this coming session, too. So going to remember that this time. First time running the session. 
person running the system. This is why I'm doing the shakedown off stream so I can make these goofy mistakes and not forget. But, uh, so, I'm debating here something. As I've mentioned, Glasswall is going to have two extra runes, two extra trophies that can be assigned to creatures that you, can t that you too can also add. Focus and re Regenerate. Regenerate is a super powerful one. I'm figuring out how to use it. But the general gist of it is that at the end of a round, you roll a die if you win, and you get a point back over like a 50-50 shot. So basically the idea is that regenerate, if you win the round, then you begin to heal, basically, as a result of the, you know, surviving. Um, so it's not much, but it's enough, and it's a super powerful ability, but it only applies in combat. The other one, Focus, allows you to utilize, uh... The other one allows you to utilize it sort of as like an out-of-combat bonus to your stats. Most trophies only apply in combat. Focus gives you a bonus outside of combat. It is super powerful. Um, specifically to your class attribute. So, useful. Got you possibility tonight if we're all available? Maybe. We'll see. It'll depend. Um, it will genuinely depend. I got a lot going on today. Since I have also... Also, for those of you guys watching who also watch Writer's Block, tonight is Chip Off the Block, where me and Redemption VA, also known to everyone as Red, uh, we kind of just chill, hang out, and we do our thing in Writer's Block. But in this case, it's sort of like a catch-up from the last episode. And honestly, it's more of a variety show at this point. We kind of just hang out and talk and, like, reflect on what's going on in, this, in the at the moment. We field questions. We explore things we didn't explore during the stream. It's a good time. Tune in. You'll see us. It'll be live at, I want to say 9.30? I think it's 9.30. 9.30? Is it 9.30 or 9? 9? 9, 9 p.m. EST? Wow, my brain is beyond fuzzy folks just look out for the alert i'll, I'll reblog it on both twitter and on every discord i'm a part of so but yes we'll be doing that so let's also get our art here for the corpse eater and also before i forget i'm going to save it i love that art look at that art that art is great look at that good boy art look at that gross boy art right there what, what a good gross boy i'm going to copy this boop Bring this over into the Corpse Eater. Put this in the background. With the Thud Beast. Thud Beast. Let's get you the Branch Devil. Huh? Okay, good. That was the one. So it's 25%. Bam. Twenty-five percent. And turn that off. As we take our Thud Beast, who is huge. And move him here. You can see how big I make my pictures. And how small these cards are. They are the size of your standard card. Uh, your standard index card. So you can turn that off. You can increase this just a little bit. Just a little bit bigger. There we go. Oh, that's perfect. I love it. Look at this gross creature that we have made together on this session. I didn't even mean to. That's how this, this, that's how this goes. I feel like we're filling out the bestiary a lot. And I know I'm pretty... I know bestiary builds are kind of a thing that a lot of you folks who are long-term fans of the channel, even before I really started getting involved with everybody over the past couple years, or the past year, um, you'll be familiar with my bestiary builds for Legacy. I'm pretty decent at making a beast. I, I make pretty good beasts. So what are we going to do with this? What are the trophies going to be? So, hear me out. I debated regeneration in my head. Regeneration would be really powerful and a fun way to broadcast how dangerous this thing is, but uh, this isn't really made to be a combat encounter. This is kind of more of like a, oops, you done fucked up kind of encounter. You fell into the pit. Oh boy. Or somebody, th somebody pushed you into the pit. That'd be bad. Uh, if you somehow survived that fall, I wish you luck. That will be ravenous. Um, so... How are we going to do this? Let's first take a moment to just describe the creature we have here. So. The Corpse Eaters of 
glass wall. There we go. Hold on. So the corpse eaters. And remove that underline there because we don't want it. Uh, delete. Thanks. Not what I wanted there. Oh right, I forgot. I'm I'm using Affinity, which doesn't use the same commands as everywhere else in the world. So uh, here we go. Corpse eaters of Glaswall slink through the damp muck within the city's great pits of the dead, sucking the flesh off of corpses, sucking the flesh off of the city's deceased. There we go. Hey, Garuda Dax, my friend! I'm doing great, and it's good to see you, buddy. It has been way too long. Happy to have you, friend. We're just making some monsters for Glasswall, a setting I've been working on for a tabletop role-playing campaign that we'll be doing live on my channel on this time slot once we're done doing the Building Glasswall series, probably in the next couple weeks. So, it's good to see you, pal. I hope you're doing good. Hope everything's still good in the hood, and you're enjoying what and you're enjoying what games you're up to as of late. Let's see, we're just currently working on fleshing out a monster, which we have for the city. We've been making a couple of them. Uh, I'm quite happy with most of these. They're all really cool. The corpse eater. This gross boy was today's work. You can thank our friend up in the chat, Mr. Clunch, for this suggestion of a recycler creature. So much love. As a matter of fact, I've been playing as much lately. Time, time, time. Yo, my friend, I feel you on that. It's good to have you, buddy. You're welcome anytime. Everyone, wave hi to Grudadax, an amazing Twitch streamer, one of my old friends back from the old Titanfall days when I used to run that game all the time. Uh, still a fantastic, still a fantastic dude. Uh, between Garuda, JJ, and Nick the Sauce, they're all loving, super funny, super friendly folks. And regardless of what games you're into, I recommend checking them out whenever they go live. They're all warm and inviting and just generally personal folks. So uh, go go follow them on Twitch. Go sub if you like what they drop if what they're you like what they're dropping. Trust me on that. You won't you won't be doing wrong. Uh, so Corpse Eater. Yes. Sucking the flesh out the city's deceased. Leaving only clean bones and Yeah, leaving only clean bones. Large not really large. Um the size of a man and let's see. How should we, how should we start this? Mostly rubbery skin? I want to say, like, rippling muscle. Because these things are, like, strong. They're, like, all strong. Is, was Mr. Niku here? Uh, Nick wasn't here. Actually, I don't know if Nick was here. I think Nick was here, possibly, for a bit. Uh, I don't think he was here tonight or today, but he has been in the past. Nick has popped in more than once. So, you know, Nick pops in from time to time. So whether or not he's awake or moving at this point. That is the real question, my friends. I don't blame him, by the way. Guy's in a different time zone than me. Pretty sure. Uh, let's see. Ripple. Let's see. Mostly rippling muscle. Hmm. A gangly creature. There we go. A gangly creature of... Rubbery sinew and slippery skin the size of a man. Corpse eaters use their massive 
distendable jaws and ropey bifurcated limbs. Let's see. To defend themselves. Let's see. Hmm. A gangly creature of rubbery sinew and slippery skin the size of a man. Corpse eaters use their distendable jaws and bifurcated limbs. Ropey limbs. We're just going to say ropey. And ropey tendrils only as a last resort. A skittish gangly creature. There we go. A skittish gangly creature. A skittish, comma, gangly creature of rubbery sinew and slippery skin. Often diving. Often burrowing away. Often burrowing... Hmm. How should we describe this? So I'm trying to, like, parse these words out. This is tough. Let's see. Slippery skin the size of a man makes a thing about TNG episode Skin of Evil. Where Tasha Yar dies. Oh, yeah! I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, the skin of evil. I am evil incarnate. And, and basically holds the whole, whole crew hostage until Picard's like, you know I'm in a spaceship, right? I, I could just fuck off and leave you. And it's like, no, don't do that. Here, have my have your crew back. Just take me with you. And he's like, no. Fuck you. We're gone. No! I'm alone again on a planet. Isolated. Like, I didn't expect that. <laughs> I remember that thing. The thing was awesome. That was great. Let's be real. That thing was basically there just so that Data could learn about mortality, unfortunately. Uh, it was also because Tasha Yar's actor was... Uh, leaving the show and wanted to, you know, have a, a go out with a swan song, which is more than most actors on Star Trek. Yet most actors on Star Trek just sort of like have an episode where they're like, "Oh, well, we're I'm going, I'm transferring, bye," and they leave. Tasha Yar actually got to die and have ramifications for the rest of the setting. Super cool. Was the corpse eater a pack animal or a lone wolf? Definitely a lone wolf. That's a great point. Let's see. Let's see. Sucking the flesh off the city's deceased. Here we go. We're just going to do that. We'll do that just to remove some space. Let's see. Skittish going the creature. The coin! My boy! Everyone say out of the burnt coin! One of the players who's going to be on the Glasswall stream game when I get that bad boy done. How do? You will arrive just in time for us to finish up a beast of the wild. The Corpse Eater. A truly grotesque foe who is not really even a foe. But if you want to like pick a fight okay you you can you can go right ahead yeah it's good to see you buddy um <laughs> oh we got a lovely crowd here thank you all for tuning in by the way it means a lot i really appreciate it Let's see that is it's not gang it's gangly that's the word gangly is a word right gangly is totally a word uh hold on a second i need to find this out because being weird Gangly. Yeah, fuck you, Affinity. Gangly's a word. I don't want to hear it. This is why I don't trust this. Gangly. I'm adding that word. Learn the spelling. Ropey is also a word. Don't give me that nonsense. Distendable is definitely a word. Learn that one. <laughs> yes, it's used in Liar Liar. Yeah, exactly. I know gangly. I'm gangly. I'm a big, loopy, like... Wormy human. Um, also saw Pub Kitty. Yes. Yeah, Pub Kitty was at the very beginning. Uh, Pub Kitty's hanging out in the chat. Everyone wave hi to Pub Kitty, one of my friends. So, okay. Using their distendable jaws. We need to see massive. These things aren't that big. I keep adding extra words that don't need to be here. Uh, this thing is only about the size of a man. It's just massive compared to us. This thing's jaws are big enough where it probably could swallow a man whole, but you probably wouldn't... It probably wouldn't want to? Uh, it, it's kind of like, uh... Like, snakes and constrictors prefer to eat 
dead things whole? Living things can claw their way out and kill the thing that's eating them. And corpse eaters, I imagine, would feel much the same about anything living. They would likely not want to eat it whole. They would only do so as a desperate move. Tall, kind of gangly, big teeth, Jim Carrey, liar, liar. Yeah, I remember that line. That was a good one. That, that was a good movie. It was a fun movie. See, Chaotic Neutral... Hey, Chaotic Neutral Chickadee, welcome to the stream. Pleasure to have you. How goes it? Oh my goodness, everyone's just pouring in and all this love, and I'm just so moved. Thank you all. You're wonderful. Oh my god. Thank you all. So, uh, as we make this weird, goofy creature... Uh, this big noodly beast of the deep. Uh, we need to figure out a couple things. Um, so skittish gang of creature of rubbery sinew, slippery skin, the size of a man, corpse eaters use extendable jaws, ropey tendrils. Hmm. Defend themselves, or let's see. Attack with distendable jaws and ropey tendrils. Let's see. Will attack. Will attack with Distendable Jaws and Ruby Tendrils only as a last resort. Often preferring to flee by burrowing into the silt below. Preferring to flee... I think that works. I think that works? Preferring to flee? Preferring to, free, to flee confrontation. Okay, now we just need to work on getting that fixed, because now I have a weird line down there. Let's see, with the general jaws. Hmm. Let's remove the slippery skin part. Do we want it? Ah, uh, I don't know if we want to. Guys, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling with this one. Oh, I'm struggling. I, I want to make it fit, and I don't want to move it up, because it's going to get covered. Let's see... Just got done with a great kickboxing session. How is your day going? Oh, my friend, I'm doing great. Congratulations on another awesome kickboxing session. Every time I see you post about that on Twitter, and all I can think of is how every time that I try to look at myself in the mirror, and I think, wow, you know, Omni, you're doing pretty good. You actually got some muscle going. You're, like, getting a little bigger. Like... Being 30 has its perks, and it's the fact that you get heavier. And then I also think, like, but if I were to try to arm wrestle Chickadee, I, I would be about as strong as, like, a flag in the breeze. So, I I will admit, keep it up. Keep it up, Chickadee. You're kicking ass. Slick skin? And just like that, a wolf's den gives me the word. Slick skin the sun. Yeah. And slick skin. That works. A skittish, gangly creature, rubbery sinew, and slick skin the size of a man. Corpse eaters will attack with... I want to keep distend... Hmm, distendable. Lash out with distendable jaws. Strike with distend... We'll strike with distendable jaws! That's the solution! Or we'll flee aggression, violence. Or we'll flee attack. There we go. Or we'll flee attack by burrowing in the silt below. We did it! We did it, everyone! It works! Ah! Now you can totally take me. I don't know. Well, you know what? That'd be a funny thing. I will say, Chickadee, if you and I ever get the chance, I would love to spar. That'd be great. I am super unpracticed, and I've never learned a martial art in my life. My only fighting style is desperate and dirty. So uh, it would be nice to learn something more formal. I know for a fact that me and my girlfriend are looking into, like, eventually sparring. I did... Hmm, I guess that is fair. I did actually learn swordsmanship. I don't have my old rattan uh, training sword here because I gave it back. I didn't want to keep it. It was it belonged to a local SCA member, and they were letting me borrow it with the understanding I was going to become a fighter. However, uh, not having a car and not being able to afford SCA fees and also, um, honestly, just not having the time to dedicate myself to the fighter training, I can't say I'm a fighter. However, I have been trained by fighters in the SCA, so I'm actually pretty good in traditional swordsmanship, in armored combat. Too bad I don't have armor. 
If I got myself full plate, I could fight like a badass. Alas, full plate costs a lot of money. And also, it's very hard to put on, and it's not very uh, useful for personal defense. <laughs> so, I only got one sword left. I, I technically have Wing Chun is very CQB, focuses more on on redirection. Good, that's awesome. Let's see, can distendable move moved up? Yeah, that's exactly what I was looking for. Um, I'll fight you in full play. That'd be hella fun. Yeah. No, seriously. If I could ever, if I could ever get myself my plate armor again, or a set of bespoke plate armor, real plate armor, mind you, like, again, I say real plate in the sense that in the modern age, SCA fighting armor is real plate in the, this was made by people who do this as a hobby and don't have literally thousands of dollars to throw away on making, like, tens of thousands of dollars to make bespoke medieval-style armor, but you can actually make some pretty good lamellar armor with very little effort in the modern era. Um, it just requires the right resources, and I just don't have them. One day, I will again make armor. And one day again, I will take to fighting. I actually learned... So, I guess we can like take a moment to just talk about it. So, a lot of folks have asked me about the SCA in the past, which is the Society for Creative Anachronisms, which is basically a nice way of saying... And they don't like the word, but it's true. It's basically a historical LARP. But one of the coolest parts of the LARP, or the historical setting... The one, no one is in character except when they choose to be, uh, which only is really for courtly events. So you're just kind of hanging out with like people who are actually just like, oh yeah, I work in an office down the street. But this person's also weaving a basket in the style of, say, uh, Norse basket weavers, or like someone out there is literally doing Japanese-style calligraphy because the character is a Japanese daimyo. And so you have all these folks from all over basically learning history and applying it to create characters, which is really cool. Uh, my character was a Germanic, I believe a Teutonic knight, uh, by the name of Joachim, who's actually an adapted, an adapted, uh, an adapted character I used for the Lancelot, something like that, Camelot RPG. It was fun. Uh, but anyhow, the fighters are probably the most insane part of that whole thing. Fighting in the SCA is terrifying because it is true full contact. You ever seen that like uh, that show that came on for a while? They were like full armored combat, and they do it up like boxing, where it's like two knights come into into a ring. They both have swords and blades and a shield. And they literally beat the shit out of each other. Okay, the SCA does that for real. Um, they actually recognize that armored combat, even in full plate. Is so dangerous you can't do it safely so you have to take as many precautions as possible as a result they regulate what you can wear true plate armor is actually forbidden because it gives you too much mass you could easily kill someone wearing full plate just because a punch like even an errant elbow would be a potentially lethal strike uh two you're only allowed to use your weapons but your weapons are highly varied uh there was a guy Swear to God, seven foot six in full Roman centurion armor. He made, by the way, using a combination of plastic, wrought iron, and leather. And he always went into battle. He has like the full, the full like regalia of a Roman centurion. So he has, uh, he has a rattan version, which is a safe wooden version with the edges filed off because you're just going for basically hits you want to hit someone hard enough for them to feel it and then they sort of call that as a hit and depending on where it goes just like larp battle you lose a limb or you might lose stand you might lose the ability to stand on one leg so this guy has the full roman centurion tower shield and he has the one-handed sword but he'd never use it outside of going to court this guy came to battle with great weapons. He had an axe that went up to his neck. And every time he'd enter into a fight, into combat, he would basically just block, block, bam. And I remember, you're supposed to pull your hits in the SCA. Because again, you can really break bones. And they often do. Fighters break bones all the time. The guy who trained me at one point got into a major duel at one point. In his early years, in his early career as a fighter, twenty years ago, 
and he shattered his elbow because a guy brought his great weapon and behind the shield he didn't deflect it properly and all the energy carried the shield into his elbow and he had to spend like with his elbow in traction basically for like better part of like three months but it, like that's the kind of danger that they go into uh so you pull your punches to avoid hurting other people it just accidents happen uh this guy <laughs> brought his axe down on the back of the second biggest guy in the kingdom and it was meant to go for his shield but this guy ducked and moved in too close to start, try to stab at him and thankfully the big guy turned his dull axe flat and hit him with the flat of the blade put him on his ass 100 percent 280 pound guy in full plate onto the ground um like he had been gently like someone had taken a dog and pushed it onto its legs like you know you know when you're like trying to groom a dog you lift it up by its scruff and you kind of like push it down so that it doesn't so it doesn't struggle this guy just literally went starfish in the mud the same way weirdest thing i've ever seen so basically what i'm saying is um that's the school of hard knocks i trained to fight in but it's so specific <laughs> its skill set is so not applicable in most other places um give me a, a three to four foot stick and i'm actually pretty good at defending myself but i i genuinely wouldn't want it it wouldn't be a there's no safety on that kind of thing weapon combat is dangerous no matter what kind uh, straight up and that's just truth like anyone who says i know a non-lethal way to disarm someone with a knife or a gun or a staff they're lying they don't there's no way to prevent injury when you swing something humans are already really good at hurting themselves or hurting each other give you an extra three feet of reach an extra three feet to increase your torque or your striking force yeah no you're breaking bones you're bruising you're sending someone to the hospital there is no such thing as improvised combat that's non-lethal or weaponized combat that's non-lethal you can always kill someone speaking of corpse eater back to the corpse eater that was a fun little uh aside of my time getting my ass beat as when i was getting trained Oh yeah, uh, I also got my ass beat by this guy. Uh, he loaned me full plate. Just the legs at the time. They didn't have a full breastplate at the time. And a shield and a rattan sword. And he taught me how fast he could move by saying, you're going to learn very quickly uh, how blocking works. Which is, you don't go in for like the big dramatic spins. You rotate your arm to strike people with different surfaces of the blade. Scorpioning is one of the ones that he was really good at. Where he brings that stick over your head and then lightly taps you on the back. And I was like, that seems like it'd be easy enough to block. He's like, is it? Come at me. And I came at him, and he literally scooped his arm behind me faster than I could move, tapped the back of and tapped like me in the square of the back, and I had like this lovely big welt there. And then ducked down, pulled the sword out from underneath me, and I landed on my ass. He did that in like less than five seconds. I, I could barely figure out what happened to me by the time that I hit the ground. Uh, so yes, no, they were, they are ruthless, but fun, and, and good, good folks, really fun. Long story short, Chickadee, I'm impressed, and I, a super, at one point, if we ever get the chance, I would love to see what Wing Chun is, uh, all about. Which means I'm willing to get my ass beat like a jackass character. Just please, please don't strike me in the nuts. I don't get paid like those guys in the jackass films do. Um, so... Let's see. If you expect it, oh yeah, no, 100%. It's a lot easier to work through the pain as well. The big trick, though, is like with those kind of fights, they're not going to the pain. They're not going for a knockout because knockout means brain trauma and it's like a family friendly event. Instead, your goal is to strike someone lethally by striking someone in a place where they couldn't possibly survive, which is basically chest, uh, stomach, and back or neck. And you don't even want the neck. The head is enough. Tapping someone in the head is instantly considered a kill strike. Because, again, you don't want to kill someone who's out, like, on their weekend having fun. That's not cool. Um, so, Corpse Eater. I debated long and hard what rune we should have here. And I think the rune we should have here is phased. So, the way that this works is it is a... It is a 3 plus... Hold on. Let's do this right. Okay, so that's... 
three. I'm gonna do it in a different uh, font. So here's the only problem I have with this font is that it does literal hashes for like the numbers. So in this case, nine is literally Roman numeral, which is great to a degree. But in this instance, it's actually kind of shitty. So we're going to use Bobcat for this. So we're going to increase ugh, the size of that to nine, just so it reads right. So a three plus chance. So a three plus save against incoming damage, against damage. So how should we do this? Three plus chance Yeah, three plus on a D4. Of course, I gotta do it back again in the other one. So we're gonna go over here again, put this in the right font. Just Bobcat on a D4. To negate damage. But if you do this, you basically disappear. So this is the problem with phased, is it's very hard to summarize. So I think we're just going to use the, the the row below it. Uh, watch Rumble in the Bronx. It's all Jack used to do that. Nice. Okay, that's fair. That works. Um, so, here's what phased does. I'm going to read you these specific terms. So then, ahem. Uh, quoting here. Phased foes literally flicker in and out of sync with the physical world. They may skip back and forth through time, or simply shift between parallel timelines. If a phased character suffers damage from any source during combat, the character can roll a single d4. On a 3 or a 4, the character ignores all incoming damage, including the damage they just suffered, for the rest of that round. However, they can do no damage themselves, and use no abilities for the rest of the round. So basically, the way that it works is it basically teleports you out of combat or out of damage if you get hit and you succeed on it. So it makes you very hard to kill and pin down, but it also means you really can't do much. I like that. That works very well with the Corpse Eater, I think. The whole idea behind the Corpse Eater is this is a creature that doesn't want to fight. This is a creature that wants to get the hell out. It eats the dead. It doesn't eat the living. So I like the idea that it has the phased one. So we're going to go for a second over to our runes. I should have the phased rune here. Should be on the Caltrop final draft. And there we go. Phased, phased, phased. Here it is, phased. Ah, perfect. Thank you, my friend. I'm going to borrow you. So you can see sort of like between places. The little like person rune between things. You go to the corpse eater. Go down to Brutal, which is at 65%. Bam! 65%. I'm going to turn Brutal off. And now we're going to grab this giant-ass rune, shrink it down, be a more manageable size. That should be right. Shrink it a little further, I think. That fits more appropriately. I think that looks good. Uh, maybe a little bit smaller so that it reads a little more clearly. Let's just see how big a brutal is by comparison. That's about right. Okay, yeah. You want it to be immediately visible and understandable is what it is. Uh, okay. That works. Whoop, that's not what I wanted. I didn't want the whole group moved. I wanted the phased rune moved. Okay. So phased. I'm just going to take the whole damn text and put it in there. So, phased. D3, or a 3... On a 3 plus on a D4. Because you roll that every time you take damage. Let's see. Character ignores all damage. To ignore... All damage. Or the... Remainder of the round. Let's see. For the rest of the round. Let's keep this small. 
the rest of the round. But cannot fight. I think that's decent enough for this. Uh, let's slightly extend that just a little bit. Okay. Now we get to extend this. And have a little, like, empty space here. So we're going to take this and shrink this down to, like, one. A little higher than one. Let's make it two. A little more. Let's keep increasing that size. Three, four. There we go. I like that. That looks good. So that's a pretty good summary. On a three, yeah, three plus on a d4 to ignore all damage for the rest of the round, but cannot fight. That's a good summary. I think that's a good summary. That'll work pretty well for anyone who's trying to run this creature. So, we now get to figure out what we're going to do for the attributes. And honestly, I kind of like the idea that we're keeping body being the thing. These things aren't particularly willful. They flee at the drop of a hat. They're not smart. They're just smart enough to not die. Again, they don't need to be intelligent. They feast on the dead. Um, and their body is probably their biggest asset because it's basically just a big noodle tube of meat. So weirdly enough, I think that statistically speaking, there's no real physical stat distinction between the corpse eater and the thud skull. The biggest difference is that the thud skull will utterly fuck you up in melee if, or rather it will fuck you up if it wins the round in combat. Whereas this other thing will desperately do everything it can to not be in combat. And that feels appropriate. So yeah. I think that's good. I think we did it. We did it. Hooray. Um, what size is this text, by the way? I just want to make sure I got this right. This is size 6. And this is... If it'll show me... Size 6. We did it, everybody. We did it. Uh, we made that size 9 in that one, though. Size 9. Come on. 9. Bam. Ah! Size 7. There you go. Size 7. Make it a little bigger. Okay, cool. We're going to save that. Real question is, can I ride on one? Um... Probably not. I don't know where you'd put the saddle. I don't think it would be okay with you riding it. It's barely the size of a man. And it probably smells like rotting flesh. But if you like that, that's all you. That's all you. Welcome back, Alec. Happy to have you. Um, also, do not ride 0 out of 10. 100%. Uh, kind of got to agree there. <laughs> Gross. But uh, cool, but gross. Probably could train one as a pet. I could see that. Uh, I'm really happy with this, though, guys. The Corpse Eater looks phenomenal. I think the design looks great. We have ourselves another adversary that you guys can end up fighting. I'm really glad about that. We're having a lot of beasts in the region, which is good. We want to have a lot of beasts. Let's see, you could use one like... I'm going to have to look that up. I'm not even going to pretend I know what that is. Copy. I'm going to look up whatever the heck that thing is. Uh, monsters, D&D &D Beyond. I figured it was a monster. Ah, yes. Exactly. Exactly. It's kind of just like a mess. Let's see. Often found in solidarity. Agreeing. Let's see. They make deals with other dungeon innocents. Agreeing not to attack them. Owner delighted in the eating of filth and offal. Yeah, pretty much. It's kind of the idea. This thing literally hangs out in the pits and it eats corpses and the people of the city are fine with it because it keeps the city safer by not having to deal with that. Also, let's get the watermark back on here. Uh, let's fix that watermark fast. So this is the thing I actually do with every single creature that I make, or every single piece of art that I make, is that I make sure that I have the proper watermark corpse eater. Unfortunately, there is no way to guarantee people don't steal art without doing this, which is the reason I do my best to at least make these things somewhat more appealing. We're gonna do this with uh, paste that format. That should look good. There we go. Okay, that's not terrible. And I'm just gonna grab the watermark here, pull that down a little bit, 
Let, let's make it so that it's as unobtrusive as possible. There we go. Yeah, I'd rather it be slightly obscuring the bone than anything else. There we go. Okay, and then we'll just take the whole thing and we'll just collapse it down a little bit. We'll just collapse the whole thing so that it's a little more readily visible. Save as. Bam. And we'll export one so that I can upload this to Twitter once we're done with the stream. Why I put our crest fade into watermarks at all? Yours. Yep. Straight up. And yes, this thing is garbage disposal. So kind of like a small rancor. I kind of figure that's a pretty good like descriptor of it. Like a tiny rancor. Um, but unlike the rancor, this thing is not aggressive in any way, shape, or form. Um, I know that most rancors aren't aggressive. They're only aggressive when startled. They're kind of like bears. You just don't want to fuck with them. Which, I mean, that's fair. I don't blame them. Let's see, so we have Corpse Eater. Public release. Bam, and we export. Okay, so yeah. Uh, had my shit stolen multiple occasions. Yeah, exactly. Like, I, I do my best to prevent it. And that's why literally every piece of art I have, every piece of art I have so far that I've released publicly has a watermark on it of some kind. Even the ones people don't really notice, they have watermarks. They totally do. Just, you know, I know exactly where they are. And it, there's often multiple watermarks. Like, hey, look, AS on the Edge of Stars. That's definitely mine. You know, stuff like that. So I can easily point it out. It's a defense, right? That's what it is. Also, I'm lucky that so far, everything I've made has been free to purchase. This, too, will be a pay-what-you-guys-would-like. Um, I will eventually be releasing a Glasswall region, like, lore book, or, like, expansion for the game, which, like I mentioned, will have two new trophies in it. So you guys will no longer have to deal with just five trophies, you'll have seven. And also on top of that, it'll also have all the different creatures I've made for the region, and a couple of NPCs as well, and a little adventure guide for people wanting to have fun within Glasswall and the Glazier's Claim. So yeah, that is definitely a thing I'm building up to. We will get that done. I'm also trying to do Legacy at the same time, so pardon the slow pace. I can't afford it. I'm super poor. However, I acknowledge that people will probably not pay me right now. I don't have enough traction. Um, and honestly, I'm also making this in collaboration with someone else, Red. And out of respect for Red, and the fact that we collaboratively built this setting, it feels kind of scuzzy for me to ask for money. For something I've made collectively with a community twice over now with the purpose of introducing it to the community and having you guys have fun. The whole idea of Caltrop Core is that it is supposed to be a fun game everyone can enjoy, uh, where anyone can make a game like that. And the idea that I had behind the AS Caltrop Core was to make a game where you could have adventures just like in a D&D style game, but as opposed to D&D, which your handbook is filled with tabs and you've got hundreds of pages and lots of work to do in it. This thing, AS, is barely the size of a testing packet for FCAT. This thing has literally just, honestly, most of its size is just the two, like the top and the bottom of it. As far as the actual book itself, yeah. I want people to be able to pick this game up and immediately go like, I wanna have fun with my friends. You can do it. You can run a game in an afternoon. Start to finish. Character creation to adventure. And have a fun time. So, yeah, I know. A anyone who's out there, FCAT, that's a uh, standardized testing. Florida, what was it again? It's Florida Critical Assessment Test, I believe is what it was. Ah, the FCAT. Since uh, a thing in the past, I believe. I don't think the FCAT is still around. I think they changed it. But yeah, it feels weird to uh, charge for that. So I'm instead relying on the generosity of the folks who are interested in this. If anyone wants to play on AS or play in Glasswall, by all means, I would love for you to download this and play it. And if you think it's worth it, if you think you've gotten your money's worth, which I promise you, you will, consider donating. 
pop on to my, uh, pop on my coffee. Throw me a couple bucks. Throw me like five, ten, whatever you think the game is worth. And, uh, give me a review on it. We'll, we'll see about that. Yep, the Florida Comprehensive Assessment Test. Thank you. Not critical, comprehensive. Uh, it's been years since I've actually had to take that thing. Forget those tests. I actually like, for the record, I like those tests. I like standardized testing because I'm a gifted student. Oh boy, there's so many problems with that. Let's see, I thought I had repressed FCAT. I could never repress FCAT. I took that thing for 12 years of my life. <laughs> Sorry, nine years of my life. Nine years of my life. Almost a full decade of my lifespan spent preparing for that test. Yeah, I know. The same, Alec, I know. Same. Let's see. Nice, I'd pay you. Thank you, Alec. I appreciate it. Um, that means a lot. I know that you guys are super supportive. I also realize we're in the middle of a pandemic. And the way I view it is that I am making stuff because I want to make stuff. And for me, I would much rather that you guys get to enjoy my work and pay me what you think it is worth than immediately put a price tag to it yet. Maybe one day I'll feel confident enough to do that. Or maybe one day I'll feel I have a big enough audience where if I do it, it'll be valuable enough. I'll be doing that for Legacy, 100%. Legacy, pay that shit. You're paying me for that. That's 15 years of work. There's no way I can't put a price tag on that. I have to put something on it. I'm still gonna keep it cheap. And I'm going to keep a tip jar open for anyone who's interested. Um, but my goal is to make games of great value to the community. Or at least games that will be fun and easy to play. Speaking of value. We're going to finish up the Wayfarers here. We're, we've got only a little bit of time left on the stream. But it's, it's enough to touch up this armor. Can I just say, Clunch, I didn't expect I'd be spending this stream making an entirely new form of life again for the setting. But here we are, and I'm really proud of our corpse eater. Our gross noodly boy. I love our gross noodly boy. The corpse noodle, the, the dead noodle, noodle of the dead. The the <laughs> al dead te as it would be. Uh okay, I'm done with the I'm done with dad jokes. I'm done, I promise. We're not going to do more dad jokes. Uh maybe more dad jokes, I don't know. We'll fill it out. I'm trying to be Trying to restrain myself first, but it's really hard. All right, so let's get our clothing down here. So we have ourselves a little bit of a ridge. Sort of take this. This gross newly boy was my nickname in high school. That's a big mood. We don't learn. We just practice for standardized tests. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That was the Winter Park High School. <laughs> that was the Winter Park High School mantra right there. You're not learning. You're preparing. Okay, so we're going to go with our ridges here. For our cloth. Because this thing is definitely like folded over here. We're going to do the same thing over here. And we're going to do the same thing right there. Then we're gonna have the top of that sort of coming down. Okay, so that's actually looking pretty decent. Let's get the detailing done on it now so that it doesn't look so bad. There we go. All right, oop, gotta run a game in five minutes. Take care, Alec. Have fun. Is this a stream game? Because if it is, I will totally host you. I will totally host you. 100%. Um, let's see. Also, we are getting to that point in the end of the stream where I'm looking for folks to host. So if anyone has any suggestions, now's the time. I highly recommend throwing me some good suggestions. Because right now I'm looking at one person I could host. One person at the moment. It's not, but I appreciate it, though. No prob, Alec. Have a good game, okay, buddy? Enjoy yourself. As I quickly touch up the last elements of this armor. So we're just going to make sure that this reads properly. Because it needs to read well. As clearly...
Let's see. Player in... Player Nerd Allies is a good one. I think they're going right now. I'll take a look and see. Player Nerd Allies. Player Nerd... Player Nerd Allies. Yes, they are right now. That's fantastic. Okay, folks. We're going to finish this off, and then we're going to buckle up and get ready for a raid. So, everybody... It's going to be a bit of a bumpy ride. I recommend you hang on your pants once we get there. Or your skirts, or, you know, your robes. Whatever it is you're wearing, you know, I'm not going to judge. I have the time when I'm streaming, I'm doing it in my PJs. So, like, you know, I'm just, just saying. Just saying, there's a reason why I don't really give you guys, like, a lower body cam. You don't need it. I don't need it. I don't need to feel pressured to get dressed for stream. I get dressed for stream anyway, because I, I want to look good. I want to look nice. I will admit, I, I do want to look nice. I want to look nice for you guys. It's a fun time. I want to respect your time and mine. But also, there are days where literally getting out of bed is almost painful, and so, yeah, no, I will totally, those days, reserve the right to wear pajama bottoms. And y'all ain't gonna ever know when those days happen. They might never happen. They might happen every day. You'll never know. Mwahaha. Ha ha ha. Okay, folks. I'm liking this. I'm gonna sort of just put the edge on that. Just so that it's a little more obvious where the pants end. Right there. We've got that bit right there. We're gonna get a darkened edge on this. Okay. Make it a little lighter. along the edge of this and I'm also going to see what's going on with that music play darn you there we go alrighty folks we're finishing up we're in our last stages can Omni in fact turn this rough sketch into a functional sort of cool piece of character art in under a minute that's a great question Omni doesn't know he never knows so he's going to have to try and boy, oh boy, is it going to be tough. So we're just going to take this, put that in there. Uh, definitely like the idea of having that, like, kind of leather-like strap over here. So we definitely have, like, a leathery strap going down here. I think that's fair. We're going to make this brighter now, and we're going to really lean into that edging. As I just sort of have these awkwardly punched leather holes in here. Because these are belts. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. There we go. Let's get the underside of that caught with light. So that it reads a little better. I don't like that. That didn't turn out well. Let's back that up just a little bit. Okay. Let's hit the tip of this with a very bright edge then. Okay. So we're going to do this. That might help a little bit. This will give us a sense of thickness. Where the light hits brightest is along the edge of these and that gives us more of a distinct shape to the belt that works okay we got that we're gonna have ourselves a belt sort of like a rope wrapped tip to this thing just so that it reads a little more like that we're going to have some arrows in there, for sure. Just to make things work pretty well. We're almost there. I'm powering through it, folks. We got this. We totally got this. Uh, we're going to have a slightly darker shade here. There we go. And we're just going to sort of pull that through. Grab our brighter edge. 
Pull that down. Grab our brightest color. And we're going to make ourselves sort of tie this little bit here. So the leather is all tied up in a square, so that's how it gets the shape that it has. We'll do the same thing on this side. Whoop, needs to be a little bit cleaner on that end. We'll do the same thing on that bit. Okay, now we're going to just take that. Slightly brighten the edge of it. Since that is where the brightest light falls. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Sort of pick it out. Now let's get our arrows. So we have our big badass arrows over here. There we go. I was wondering what was taking so long for that one. It was taking its sweet time. We are going to give these guys, by the way, normal... I think normal boots is fair. Let's darken that even further. Just to indicate that this is definitely, like, not part of the, uh, pants. Or the boots. There you go. That looks much better. Look at that. Oh, that's so much better. Okay, so now we're going to get the underside of the boots here. We're going to do the same thing we did before. Grab this little leathery bit, and we're going to get to work. We're going to make ourselves some boots. Okay. And we're just going to take this. So bear with me, folks. We got ourselves boots incoming make this a little grayer. As we just subtly rope all that up, we're going to take a very bright white with a string. As we sort of pull the shape of the boot together. And then you just give little spots where it's sewed up. And just like that, we have ourselves some boots with very little effort. Nice, well-worn traveling boots. Now we just gotta give this thing a shadow and fix this bow, which is something I really wanna do. Let's also clean up this shoulder here. It's a bit of a mess. There we go. There you go, just a little bit of cleaning, you know? It goes a long way. Okay, now let's get that bow. I'm gonna do some of the clothing layer, I think. I think for this, we're just gonna keep it as like one sharply angled piece. You don't need to worry too much about the overall shape. They're very good at whittling in this, in this city, this particular part of the setting. So they can sort of smooth out the shape as they need. This thing probably has a very flat edge surface in the front. And it comes down to this point. Very small, like, little ridged part there. We'll do the same thing on the other side. But invert it. So, in this case, we're going to take our handle, wrap it in leather. It's one of my favorite things to do. Making leather is super easy. Usually, barely an inconvenience. Just gotta wrap it with rope. Before you know it, you have yourself a pretty decent looking handle. 
And you just take a little bit of shadow on the underside. A little darker than that, please. Thank you. Okay, cool. That works pretty well. And now finally, we are going to go to, if it'll load the next song. Thank you. Good God. I don't know why YouTube's being so difficult now. Okay. All right. So we're going to just take that section right there. And we are just going to expand the back side of this. We're going to inverse where the light falls on this thing, which is very difficult to do, by the way. But we did it. And now we just need to take a bowstring, make it do its thing. So we're going to quickly up here. Since this is a recurve bow, the string wants to be as far up as possible. I think about here, but as high as we can reasonably get it. And this is definitely a man killer bow, 100%. The beast slayer bows or the beast killer bows, those things are massive. Not the same. Not in the same weight class. And we're just going to take a little bit of white around there. Make this hemp and rope sort of stand out a little bit. There we go. This tightly wound hempen cord looks pretty good to me. Okay, guys, we're pretty much there. Thank you all so much for tolerating my stream and having a fun time with me. I really do appreciate you guys being on with me every time we do Building Glasswall in the week. It is a fantastic experience, and I'm genuinely grateful to get to spend all this great time with people as cool as you guys. So thank you for helping me build my setting in this cool little world that me and Red have made. Right, we're just gonna take this here. You know what, what we're gonna do? We're actually gonna take this thing, we're gonna take this string, this hempen rope, and it's not going to be tied on at the moment. There's no way this guy would have knocked his bow. Eh, he would have. He would have. He probably would knock his bow in this instance. That's fine. Yeah. And let me just grab one tool here to make sure I've got the right shape. I know it looks weird, but I promise I'm doing this for a reason. We also need to get bracers on him. Oh god, bracers, bracers, bracers. I need to do bracers. I need to do one bracer on one arm. And there's a simple reason for it, folks. If you ever fired a bow, you don't want to get struck by that bowstring, especially when that bow is really high tension. It's a great way to abrade your forearm. So let's get in here, do this leather super fast. I'm just gonna do one really hardy leather bit, one really hardy leather bracer on the inside of the arm. I do it really quick. It's not going to have any, like, fur or anything on it. You don't want that, because that'll get caught on the bowstring. We're going to grab this, slightly increase the leather color just a little bit. Increase that, temp increase that just a little bit more. And to keep doing this in layers until we get ourselves a nice looking leather. There we are. And finally, we get the edge. And just like a little tiny string here around the outside. Now we're going to sew this bad boy up with some string. And just like that, given our archer a good Bam brace. Let's put a line in there too to divide. Show where the bracer is uh, split. So this guy doesn't have his arm permanently encased in leather. There, cool. We did it. Took very little time, but we managed it. 
Let's lighten that up a little more. Just like a contrast to that arm. Ah! Perfect! We did it, folks! Waywatch is done! I can now officially raid! Everyone, get ready! Grab your socks, get ready to rock. We're getting ready to roll! Raid time! Tech use has been slowing work a lot, so I'm missing streams more than I'd like. That is very fair. So what was the name of that again? It was Play Nerd Allies. Alrighty, folks. Everyone, jump in. Brace yourselves. We launch in... shortly. We launch shortly. More of you folks, get ready. It's gonna be a pretty big stream we're jumping into. They're actually pretty cool from what I hear. So, I'm happy to see them playing. Alrighty, my friends. Get ready. We're raiding in three, two. Also, by the way, thank you for helping me build Glasswall, everyone. I'll see you over there. Peace. Did it work? Yes, it did. Okay, cool.